This video will show how to bud graft a citrus tree. This includes ordering budwood, forcing the bud to grow, and all of the tips needed for success. When grafting citrus, the most important thing is to use disease-free budwood. Citrus cuttings infected with a disease called citrus greening were brought to Miami, Florida from Asia and the disease quickly spread to all citrus farming counties, killing every infected tree, both farmed and homegrown. Infected trees die in just a few years. Insects that spread citrus greening are now widespread in Asia and the United States and have recently been found in continental Europe in northwestern Spain. The Citrus Clonal Protection Program, or CCPP, distributes citrus budwood of hundreds of varieties of trees that are regularly tested and verified to be free of disease. It is quick and easy to order online from CCPP and anyone can request an account. Click here or on the link below for a video that shows how to set up an account and order budwood from CCPP. In this video, I am grafting Rojo Blanco Grapefruit Pumelo Hybrid using cyan's ordered from CCPP. I will demonstrate chip budding. The cambium is a thin layer of tissue between the bark and the wood. Here you see me tracing with a black pen the cambium layer of the front of the chip bud, the back of the chip bud, and the rootstock. My number one tip for success is to align the cambium of the chip bud with that of the rootstock. One might think that the chip should be aligned to the outside of the bark. Comparing the outline of the cambium layer of the rootstock and that of the bud shows that the cambium layers are not well aligned. For the graft to succeed, the chip bud must be aligned so that the cambium layers are in contact. The blue arrows show where the cambium is now in contact. So that the graft succeeds and also to prevent the spread of disease, tools should be sterilized between grafts. I use chlorine bleach at a concentration of 1.5%. Citrus is notoriously difficult to graft successfully. At the end of the video, I will share more tips for success. Now for the grafting. I'll be grafting a single bud to this Carrizo rootstock. Now I'll choose my bud. Often there will be budwood of different shapes in the package. In this case, the package that I received included both round-shaped budwood and also triangular-shaped budwood. I prefer the triangular-shaped budwood when I'm chip budding. I find that the buds can be cut smaller. There's the round budwood right there. Cutting them small is especially useful when grafting to smaller diameter rootstocks. If there's a petiole still attached, it can be used as a convenient handle for holding the bud after cutting. It's important to avoid touching the cut surfaces and this can be avoided by holding the bud with the petiole. I've marked my chosen bud with a pin. Here I cut into the bark of the rootstock to prepare a place where the chip bud will be inserted. Note that I leave a loose flap of bark at the bottom under which the bottom of the chip will be tucked. I cut the chip from the cyan starting above the bud then I cut under the bud going to a longer length than I need. I then remove the knife and cut again below the bud at an angle to detach the bud and expose cambium at the bottom front of the chip. Here I tuck the bottom of my chip bud into the flap of my rootstock and adjust the bud so that the cambium layers are touching. The bud is a bit smaller than the wound in the rootstock, but I'm able to get the cambium in contact at both the lower left and upper right of the bud. Now I wrap the graft with half inch parafilm. Included at the end of the video is a link showing where parafilm can be bought. I gently pull on the parafilm and stretch it slightly as I wrap it. By pulling on it as I wrap, the cambium of the bud is pushed into contact with the cambium of the rootstock. Pulling and stretching the parafilm also makes it stick to itself. It wouldn't stick very well without pulling. I like, like to wrap over the bud, but the petiole is in the way, so I remove the petiole by pushing it downward gently with my thumb until it breaks off. When I accidentally break the pear film, I continue wrapping over the break. I wrap until I'm sure that I have a good seal all around. I pull the pear film to break it and push with my thumbs to verify that I have a good seal. I always make a label to record what I grafted and when I grafted it. 
It's not shown here, but to avoid direct sunlight from hitting the graft and drying it out, I move it into a shady area for healing. After three or four weeks, I unwrap the butt. It has healed well, callus tissue has filled in all around the wound. The next step will be to force the bud to grow. In a phenomenon known as apical dominance, natural hormones from the buds at the top of the rootstock prevent buds lower down from growing. This apical dominance must be broken in order for a citrus chip bud to grow. I break the apical dominance by cutting halfway through the rootstock and pushing it over so that the terminal buds are lower than the newly grafted bud. Next, I move the grafted tree to a sunny spot so that the bud will grow. The bud begins growing after a few weeks. When there is some significant growth from the bud graft, I cut the top of the rootstock off. After a couple more months of growth, the tree will be ready for staking. The rootstock had developed a couple of small branches or suckers. Here I pinch them off. It's important to remove these suckers from the rootstock as they could eventually take over and crowd out the grafted variety if left alone. I stake the tree after removing the rootstock suckers. Home grafted citrus trees are especially vulnerable to infestation by insect vectors of citrus greening. Citrus production nurseries in California go to great lengths to produce citrus trees and ship them without spreading citrus greening and citrus psyllid. Their techniques are not available to the home grafter, however. Home grafted trees in the open air are magnets for citrus psyllids which are difficult to detect with the naked eye and which may be carrying citrus greening.